I pass out. Salut. What was I doing? When once you do as they're dictating or telling you to do, then everything falls back into place. Do you know how the class are made about? Today it's an honor, guys, to be joined by someone who has been in the television for uh, over a decade. It has been uh, a long journey for her to be where she is today. We are joined by Mahofi Mwag. So we are okay? Um, I really appreciate making this time to talk to us. I don't take it lightly. I just want to say thank you so much. I have been a fan of your work for for a very long time. Um, I would like to know about you more to say give my mahof according to your uh, to your own knowledge about her. Mm. Um, first of all, thank you for extending an invitation to your show and congratulations on your endeavor. I know it will go bigger and bigger because this is not an easy thing to start doing, but well done. Mahofe um, Moahi, um, who is she? It's uh, it's not easy, especially when you ask someone to explain who they are, because there are so many facets to who we are. And with me, it's um, not 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 challenge, but it's it's very interesting because you will find that I'm at a I shifted from what you just described as who am I. Mahofe Moari is a. She's a mom, I've got four kids. Um, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, businesswoman, yes, philanthropist, um, an actress, motivational speaker, but more than anything, um, I'm the chosen one, mm. and, and proudly so. Uh, just just so before we get there, um, what are your best memories as a child, the environment which you grew up in? I know you, I can't yeah. relate So how is the environment growing up, the kind of environment you grew up in, in terms of the school? Okay, taking it back to Kaskorol. Kaskorol has got the same setup as Denalton. I've been to Denalton. Mm. It's got the same setup. It's just that I think Rena, or oh, I was um, blessed enough to to have that feel, yeah, and then my grandmother, my late grandmother, Nana Lee Blas. Mm. So after school, we will go to the farm just to to help her, whether all the ground nuts or uh, potatoes, whatever, or the mango, the popo, whatever. But I lived that kind of life. Um, after school, we'll go play in the river, mm. you know. So eventually we moved from Raskororo to Ramakwishani, both my parents nearly into my teacher. So Karifika Ramakwishani Rujitu go got the same. My my upbringing was it was pretty much um, sheltered. Um, I don't remember us having much of privileges. Uh, I guess the privilege was growing up under a household way. My parents believed in you have to so I grew up in an environment where literally sharing is caring for us. My parents were a testament of that. There was never a year in a general my mom or dad have a doctor, a relative's child or someone's child or anything by lip licking eating gum merego and bakopana no one inning is very intelligent, but the parents don't have, you know, the resources for by some one So I grew up kids what I have is the thing of this world. And mm -hmm. so if I can share, if I have a little bit to share, there's nothing wrong with that. That is why um, I can come here get a regular bucket at KFC. I'm not going to finish the bucket alone. So I will always share. Whether you guys had money to buy those things, you just didn't want to buy them. But because of who I am, I'm not doing it because the kids, I'm doing it because that's who I am. So I, 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 I come from that um, environment. I had, I had friends, um, childhood friends. Some of them were still talking from Namahale, from when we moved into town, Kopalabora, because now I get a guy, my mom, Kopalabora. 
Rikirikarai, it's, it's in town, it's not like Namakhale per se, because we did stay in Namakhale and then we moved into town. Lohana, we I made um, friendships, went to the high school there, but my high school aiming, it kind of like shaped who I am when we talk about the entertainment space, was Kolebeko High School. Um, my acting, my love for just escaping into a script or a book or just being an entertainer was kind of shaped from there. But when we moved into Go Palabora into town, my mom just started working for PMC Palabora Mining Foundation. So they had a CSI wing, meaning they were tasked into building the early learning centers. So my mom was um, heading those those projects, so she, she would travel a lot. But she would make sure if she comes to pick us up from Koskolong and she had to go to work or she's come or we're going with her, my mom would plonk us in the library. I don't know, go and you know, visit the world. Mm. Just that means go get a book, mm. go read, escape into a book, um, find just find other things, you know, that are much bigger than you. Because I was very shy, McNally Tong growing up, <laughs> but I still am. I, 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 I'm an extroverted introvert. Mm. Mm. I still am. There are times where like, I'm, I'm happy just being alone. And then there are times where I'm happy just being around people. There are times where I want to go out, you know, get good at clubbing. And there are times where like, nah, I, I can't do with that. The last time I went to a club was ugh, years ago, probably six, six, seven years ago. Moki put it over like, I'm, I'm just going to go have fun. But being invited by someone, it was probably three years ago. So I, I hardly, hardly, hardly do that. Just, just before Gunolo comes in, um, mm -hmm. one day you said, Tori, the entertainment side of you uh, was kind of nurtured from an early childhood whereby you grew up more on a level who yeah. used to be entertainers. Yeah. I just want to know about that kind of space and um, uh, uh, how it affected you or maybe helped you to transition in a certain way whereby so the, the, the language and the communication the medium of in, of communication now mm. is, is different i just want to know about these two phases of okay. your life growing up in a family of entertainers ne? um it actually kind of helped cement one being in the entertainment space in the sense of they made it seem so natural. Mm. No, no script per se. Even if someone wrote out like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what you have to say. It was in a very healthy environment, you know, where I'm like, okay, so even if I, I mess up, they are not going to be, the, the, um, the criticism wasn't going to be that harsh. So, but it also made me um, aware of it. In as much as we are having fun, the, it, it is a competition of some sort. You know, you still have to put out your best, you know. So it, it laid the foundation, yeah, to find it much easier, even if uh, I'm in an environment way or in the studio, for example, where I literally have to remember, I've got a script, I have to remember my lines, and also I have to bear in mind or the director is going to direct my moves. So the psychology that comes the in terms of who your character is you still have to remember like okay i have to churn out um charity charity so if they're saying what she's going to behave like this this is how she's going to embody that script and then based on what the director is saying how i need to my movements you know have to be so it's um it's it's, it's a lot of work but having that background it just made it easy because another thing is for me it was an exercise of um can I pretend to be someone else apart from Mahofe? And can I do it so well? It would be so convincing to the person watching it, you know? So the two kind of, when it came to the entertainment space, um, having my, my uncles or family, we doing that, put in place during the holidays. We, we did that a lot um, before my late grandfather passed away. And after he passed on, all of that stopped. But my grandfather believed, was very family orientated. Come holidays, especially December, he wanted all of his children. I come from a, a polygamous background. So for me, it's tembu, it's really no, it's, it's a normal thing. It's, it's a normal thing. It's something that 
when I, as I grew up, I understood that it, everything that we do in life is negotiated upon. You negotiate how people treat you, even you now. You negotiate how people treat you. The respect that you get is based on some sort of, like, whether it's a, something that you communicated on, but you negotiated the respect that other people are going to give you. So even being in, 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 that, in that space, it made me aware, wherever you go in life, you need to make sure for people who understand who you are, where you're coming from. And then moving to, oh gosh, um, the multiracial school, Franzi Tori. It's, it was a very tough, 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 tough one. Um, coming from a background where you just, you black child, Skolosi go in the village, the high school was in the village, and then now we told her, no, we need to do, um, to integrate multiracial schools, blah, blah, blah. And Palabora is very, the Afrikaners, you know. Mm -hmm. So now there are these black kids that are going to be forced upon us. It was tough breaking in there, because the first year um, we were four, we were five girls. I was the only one in my in my grade, and then there were there were two, and then three, the other, I think it was grade grade eight, seven, eight, nine, and being the only one in my grade, it was black. The only black girls. There were five. Mm. That first year, they tried out five five students were allowed to mm. to attend the school. And you're a girl. You don't understand uh, Africans that well. You get lost during break and you're trying to ask the prefect to tell her like okay where's your necklace and he calls you mm -hmm. but she can hear what dot 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 it's 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 the, the fear the psychological fear because now you're like you're all alone here mama le papa they are not here there's no one from your family there's, there's no one to protect you because even the teachers sometimes when you walk in a class that is supposed to be an english class um, let's say, for example, I used to, I, I love maths and physics and science, but they'll revert to teaching in Africans, a language that they knew was foreign to me. Language barrier. Yeah, I, I, the language barrier, I couldn't understand the language. But they would teach it in Africans, and by the end of that year, I failed because of that. You get lost, you get called names. So now, as a girl, you're thinking, am I going to be raped here? Am I going to be beaten up here? Am I going to be abused here? I remember that whole year, going back home, crying, begging my parents, can you just please take me back to Lebego High School? At least there I had friends. At least there I knew who I, who I was. I knew, you know, I was excelling. I was thriving. Mm -hmm. And now I am thrusted into this environment because, okay, the government said this is what must happen. But also my parents had a vision. They knew this is how the world was, you know. That for me, in terms of having the tough skin, it helped create that it helped me to grow a tough skin it helped me to find mechanisms psychological mechanisms to protect myself you know the the, the mental um, mechanism because it will affect your mental health I, I hated going to school every day I hated because I knew what was going to happen I knew what, uh, what I was going to experience but I guess over time there, there were also other um, I had classmates actually that that protected me. I had classmates that really cared um, that I, um, I was also part of them. You know, I was also part of their team, even though I knew it was difficult because now it meant that oh, you're seen as you're protecting this um, this kafirki. So it means they would call them kafir lovers actually. Mm. We would hear that, and then obviously with them also having friends and they don't want to be ostracized. Mm. They would, I, w I would see it when they were trying to, to pull away because they don't want to be associated with me, but they also felt they, they need to protect me in, in a way. And I, I kind of I respected those who, who tried to do that. And, and some of the, the boys as well, my, my classmates, some of them really tried, you know, to, to protect me in, in, in as much as it was also difficult for them being boys and being in, in high school. So it's... I guess it affected everyone differently, but for me, it, it, it helped me to, to grow a thick skin. And it didn't make me hate white people. It was just that the notion that you can't be so entitled mm. and even be so blind 
to see the privileges that you grew up having. I am just here so that I can also have the opportunity to broaden my world because I knew um, by virtue of my mom leaving us in the library that the world was so much bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And I also understood why my parents were doing it because I would always tell them like, um, when I was eight years old, um, this I, I remember, but sometimes my mom would remind me. When I was eight years old, I remember we're playing and an aeroplane, that's when we were Ramakushan, and a, a, a plane flew by. So I froze whilst other kids were playing. So I froze uh, mid as playing and I, I just looked at the plane. But what is that? What is that? I don't know what is that? Aeroplane. But yeah, but yeah, you're here. One day I'm mm -hmm. going to travel the world and I'm going to be so famous. Mm -hmm. I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. So for me, I didn't know what it meant, but I knew I, I don't want to be in that environment. There's so much you know, out there. Mm -hmm. um, my grandfather, before he passed on, he was one of the first people to have television mm -hmm. um, in the village. So from the, the setup, yeah, the way um, home was, or my grandfather's home, um, he built like a town hall. And then come December time, we love Michael Jackson, he would literally take two of the televisions, put them there, and then play for the community kids that will come. Um, there will be poetry sessions, there will be dancing sessions, mm -hmm. you know. But they will also watch TV. We're all obsessed with Michael Jackson. He made sure he bought some of my uncles. You know the um, the Reba 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 Bina thriller, yeah. the jackets that they had, yeah. the red and white jackets, yeah. the dance moves. My uncles would dance like Michael Jackson. <laughs> they had those jackets. So it was w w one of those feelings. But for me, it, it opened up my world. You can be more than what you think or what you believe or what people say. So being in... in, in, in um, um, Franz Dutoy, it also, as tough as it was, I knew what I, I don't want to be, I don't want to remain here, whether it's physically or mentally, psychologically, I knew th th there's so much out there for me. Mm -hmm. What, how, I didn't know, but I knew that I wanted it, you know. So I was, I was in France, I had to obviously change subjects now, but it, it was what it was. We accepted it, um, but I, I'm grateful for my parents for literally having the vision to like, okay, I know it's going to be tough, but you're going to remain because you are going to be there. So sometimes, even when you find yourself in a tough situation, it doesn't mean what I fail, but it's a failing circle. Mm. It's, it's just that be in there and op be open enough to be willing and wanting to see what lessons am I supposed to learn from here. Because in the lessons that I learned from there, I'm a tough cookie. I don't care what you say. Your, your words, they mean nothing to me, especially when you're projecting who you are, how you're feeling, as opposed to me knowing my truth. You can't tell me anything about myself. If it's something in it I don't believe in, I don't subscribe to, listen, like water to the, you know, dark speck, it will just, it's our, it's our. You, you can say whatever you want, you know, so. Firstly, I'd like to say you look absolutely amazing. Thank you. Um, and I like how you really, it's evident that you grew up in an environment that cultivated your passions and your desires. And I just like how you articulated that. So then my question would be, um, when did you, when did it dawn in your mind, Hore, actually, I want to be in the entertainment space. And you mentioned that your parents were teachers. Mm -hmm. So how did they respond to that? My parents, man, um, when I told them, because when I came here, I got a scholarship to study as a um, travel consultant. And during that time, I had a, a, the privilege of becoming friends with um, an amazing woman. Um, she's also a television um, producer. Do you know I, I don't know if you guys remember the the movie um, or film called Zulu Wedding. Zulu, Zulu. Zulu Wedding, she produced that. So Dineo was at um, the, full school, the film school here, Yamo Bramfontein. And she she was like, um, oh, we used to stay at the model house together and she would be like, um, I, I need to, to shoot um, something for my, my third year. Can you please um, partake in it? 
I was like, no, no problem. And then there was a music video that they were shooting. They shot it also somewhere here in Bamfontein. I just can't remember the way. And back then I had bold, bold hairstyle. The song was called Gom Gom. And I was the interest um, girl there. <laughs> so we, we did that. And the owners of the, the school, I guess they were so impressed with me. They literally offered me a scholarship mm. to come study. But then I had to decline because firstborn came to Joburg on a scholarship and I was also working and I didn't foresee or I didn't want my parents rather to actually now having to stop taking care of, you know, providing for mm. my siblings and taking care of me. Mm. So I'm like, mm, I can't afford to do that. Maybe two years time or whatever but deep down i knew such opportunities they don't come often mm -hmm. and the the guy i forgot his name he was like listen this is one of those like we can see your star we can mm -hmm. see you are made for this space can you please just reconsider there is, is, isn't there any other way of you know balancing the two but i couldn't because during the day obviously i had to go um to go to work to the to travel um company that I was, um, that I got the scholarship for. So I had to go intern there. So there was just, there was no time mm. for me to even say, oh, like, okay, I will go and, and, and study. So I, I forfeited that. Mm. But I guess later on the bug was, yeah, I was bit. Mm. So I started, um, I joined a, an agency and started doing ads up until I started now acting. So I started go. I had skits go generations as well. Yeah. Mm. Until Skim Sun. So for me, my, my parents are like, you know what? I, it's we, we saw it coming. Mm. As long as you are happy, as long as it makes financial sense to you, mm. go ahead and do it. But don't neglect other aspects of you know of your life. Mm. So they they were very they were very supportive very supportive which kind of shocked me but <laughs> okay th th they would tell her like i was very stubborn i, I did believe what i would i will make a living out of it you know it's just i guess when you're given an opportunity at a particular time your spirit your soul will mm -hmm. tell you like listen you are on the right course mm -hmm. it might look like you are living out um, certain aspects of your life, but you are on the right because you need to do this, you mm. know. So I, I, I followed that. Mm. Okay. Have you had one of these before, like mobile? Hope you already try. <laughs> I did. I yeah. did. I actually know um, no. Bryce Booth. Yeah. So this, this is another. It's just testament to when you really put your heart in it, you believe in it, and. It's, it's your passion, man. You you can't stop but fight for that. Mm. It's like your, your, your baby. Mm. You can't give up on your baby. Irrespective of how people... It's naughty, it's unruly. It's your baby. Mm. You will do anything and everything to, to make sure or they grow and thrive in whatever space you, you put them in. I do drink more fire. It's just that of late, oh, it's have a lot of energy drinks because yeah. the high is very high and then the low for me is, I tank, I pass out. Salute. <laughs> I, I know, Maori, your dad has Oh, this is a nice, mm. nice flavor. Okay. Yeah. Your dad, ki thing, ki tru, tropicas. <laughs> yeah. When I just work authentic, come work. <laughs> so I know, Maware, your dad has been kind of a mentor, supportive to you. What are your best memories with him from the childhood Ooh. until? Okay. Until um, he passed on. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm very, Papa Tari, like, I'm, I'm stubborn. If I was a boy, probably would have butted heads. Um, so many times. Um, I used to enter beauty contests. My my dad was like my cheerleader. Mm -hmm. So coming to Joburg, like you're beautiful. 
my ass will be like, um, thank you, I know. And they're like, yeah, you're cocky. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not being cocky. My dad told me that, mm. which is what fathers are supposed to do in their child's lives, especially girl child. Your daughter is supposed to feel the experience that love. You are the first man that your daughter is in love with. You are the first man that your daughter understands the meaning of love. So if you don't give it to her, if you don't tell her how beautiful she is, how smart she is, how ma amazing she is, how magnificent she is, you expect the world to fill that cup mm -hmm. for her. And the world is going to fill that cup with dirty water. They are going to mess it, to mess it up. Mm -hmm. So my dad made sure I, I knew how amazing I was. I knew how intelligent I was. I knew how smart I was, you know. I knew how beautiful I was. Mm -hmm. And he allowed me to thrive in my naughtiness. I was a tomboy growing up. So the beauty contest would be like, oh my God, okay, okay, that weekend. Make sure that you don't get hurt too much because I'll compete with boys. Sometimes I'm like, we recycle, whatever. Mm -hmm. I believe that I can't tell him if can do anything, I can't do better you know and my my dad um fostered that he cultivated that he encouraged that mm -hmm. so for me that was the the best time growing up growing up with my dad was like i i knew that there was nothing that i can't do in my dad's eyes you know but also my dad um now that i'm older i i appreciate that so much but it used to drive me nuts Hore, my dad was very patient eh? patient he was also an empath, but he, he had a way, a calm way of dealing with people. Even if he sees or like more, oh, this is, this is BS. Mm -hmm. But my dad, my dad would sit like that. <laughs> Braden would sit like that. I'll tell you, I would like that. I would like that. And I would like that. And I would like you don't have to lie to me. Slow to mm. Emma. Yeah, very slow to anger. But put like a put in need so that we can make an informed decision based on the things that you did. Mm -hmm. Because but how about they come here and they tell me a different story from what you're telling me. It's going to be a problem. I won't be able to help you mm -hmm. if you are not helping yourself. Mm -hmm. And Kahai within the family, like I told you, um polygamous um, background. So my grandfather had three wives and every time there's like issues within the family. My dad was called the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. Everyone will come to Braden. They will sort out Braden. Mm -hmm. This is an uh, issue and I know we take it to say what Papa will not take sides. He was not biased. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much he loved you or you guys got along. My dad was never biased. Mm -hmm. neat. He will listen to all sides of the story and then he will make an informed decision based on that. And I never understood that. Now if I see her and this is the situation I was very quick to like to to cut you off or to put you in your place without trying to to understand or like okay all of us when we react to whatever it is that is affecting us i don't know what your story is i don't know you know from or you come from what um household i don't know what happens within that household mm -hmm. but the way that you react to things that are happening in this world will be informed by where you come from mm -hmm. will be informed by your experiences or whether you are mature or or, or not but the way we do or say things is informed by something that is affecting us. Mm -hmm. So it was only later that I had the, the understanding and it was a conscious move on my side because having the spiritual gift, it made me also understand what there's other things seeming will inform how people come to certain um, decisions in their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like the conversation that we're having in the car, Mm -hmm. I might want to do some things of this world and my ancestors will be like no not now mm -hmm. we want you to focus on our things mm -hmm. and up until or unless you pass or ascend from this level this position that we want you nothing is going to happen nothing nothing is going to happen you will not achieve anything and people will think Hore, you are lazy you you are just not motivated enough you you don't want to do that no sometimes badimu will block you from achieving those things and once you do as they're dictating or telling you to do then everything falls back into place mm -hmm. 
So with with that, um, it made me realize that like, oh, okay, we all have a background, and within that background, there's there's a story, and within those stories, there are certain traumas that we we've, we've gone through, you know. And I started um, putting myself into, like, intentionally putting myself into other people's shoes, especially when they do certain things, sending will be like, oh, why, why would that person do that? Like, can't it's just, it, it doesn't make sense. Where was the logic or the common sense in someone behaving or doing the way they did, you know? Up until I put myself in that person's shoes and I'm like, okay, why did that person behave like that? Why did they do what they did? There's always a reason, and it's a reason that makes sense to that person. It doesn't have to make sense to you, but it makes sense to that person at that at that time. Mm -hmm. That's why you find out as we're growing, when you look back on certain things or certain people that you had around you, certain environments that you allowed yourself to to be in, looking back, you'll be like, "Yo, Nadine, what what was I doing? Why was I there?" But at that time, back then, it was the right thing to do. So right. you can't fault yourself. That's why most of the time I would say, I don't have regrets. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't go through those experiences, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. I needed to go through that hurt. I needed to experience the humiliation, the, the betrayal, the, the, the pain. I had to go through those fires for me to learn and to move on to the next level. That's why they say life is a school. Mm -hmm. It is a school. But you need to be aware of um, the lessons that you're supposed to learn. What grade are you in? If you want to remain in primary school, you will. We've got adults working around and they're toddlers. They have toddler emotional mentality. Mm. You know, the emotional intelligence is just not there. Just, just before we, we, we leave, I just want to know more about like the spiritual side of you. Mm -hmm. You grew up in a Christian home whereby you were taught Christian principles, you read the Bible. Yep. You, one day you said you don't love the, <laughs> sorry, the name Christian, but in a spiritual home, mm -hmm. that's how you want it to be described. You grew up in a spiritual home whereby you're studying the Bible, praying, going to church, coming into a point whereby you realize or on a calling. Mm -hmm. So having to obey to the calling, how, how did you re, like, accept or on a calling and I need to follow this path? And when you accepted that, back into the set to to set, when you are shooting now, with our very a different whole staff, the the treatment and the atmosphere on set was it changing? People they understood, like your 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 spiritual side. Okay, um, let's take back a little bit. It's not about relinquishing being a Christian. Yeah. I think that's where people get it wrong. Even pastors have a calling. Yes. Where is that calling coming from? Yeah. You know, I can open a church and preach. Mm. There are pastors binding it, they are fake. But they studied the Bible because it's a book. That's why I said the calling. They studied, they studied the Bible. Now I'm going back to the Christian part. Yeah. Um, I grew up in a Lutheran church and then as I got older and understanding and knowing who, who I was, I realized that there's a lot in the church that people manipulate for their own selfish gain. People will read the Bible and break it down according to their selfish gain. Mm. And th I, I found that difficult to resonate um, spiritually because I could sense when someone is lying. That is not what the Bible speaks about there are so many verses in the bible that speak about us we are a stepping stone to each other mm -hmm. you don't know that this show is a stepping stone to her having probably maybe working with oprah or whatever but she had to start here mm -hmm. so god puts us put us in place to elevate each other mm. so it's, it's, it's the same thing in in, um, in, in in church when i don't understand why would a pastor be selfish and choose to break down a Bible in a way ending is not um, benefiting his congregation. Mm. And even sometimes the way they would preach, they would 
break down the, mor the morale of the congregation. They will make you feel bad for not having enough money to tithe. And they will threaten you with, yeah, God will punish you if you don't do that. Where in the Bible does he say that? Are you a Christian? Is that Christian mentality? They say give to be blessed. You are buying the, the blessing. No, that, then there, there's no God. God yeah. does not operate like that. I, I don't have to manipulate you to give me your money. Then you are taking self-will, Yabatu, to do what you want them to do. You are not God. You are God's conduit. But you are not God. But you want people to see you, to have this Messiah mentality about you. That's not um, being Christian-like. That is why I don't like the term being a Christian. I am not a Christian. I read the Bible still. I still go to church. I listen to Rudi. Um, about a certain verse in the Bible. But that does not mean I'm a sheep. No. I am not that meek sheep that is led blindly. I also have a soul. You have a soul. You have a soul. They have a soul. Mm. If you don't listen to that voice, that innate campus in you that tells you like, no, here you are messing up. No, that person is wrong for you. No, leave this place. There's danger. Danger is coming. Danger is looming. Your, your, your instincts will tell you but people refuse to listen to that, which I don't understand. You want which God to come and show you what? To tell you where, because God is speaking to you, but you don't want to listen. You doubt yourself so much. It's, it's ridiculous. It's literally embarrassing the God that created you because he put a microphone, an internal microphone, so that he can speak to you in your private space. Why do you think they mean have a secret prayers? Secret prayers is you. I'll be sitting here praying. You'll be, let's say, or we're fighting. But because I am trying to control or calm myself, I'll be praying internally. I'm communicating with my soul, with my secret voice, you know. But we don't listen to that. And the pastors don't want to tell people, Hore, you can actually will certain aspects of your life the way you want you don't have to come to church to wait for me to tell you this is what you're supposed to do you can innately be able to do that you can pray for your own child mm. before they go to school before they leave your house you can pray for your child mm. you know so that god can protect them i don't have to wait to go to church on sunday for the pastor to put their hands on my on my child no it was god who told me like i need to have this child so as I was saying, now I'm spirit-led. Um, yes, I believe in the Bible, but I also um, believe in, in Badim. And it's, it's not something that I went out choosing to be. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've known since I was young. And most of the time, I was told, up until 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 I so that basically means whatever help they were giving me in church, I can get they, they use waters. So yeah. when I leave church, they were not happy. So the way I interpreted, you are focusing too much on the church side. You need to come and focus on us. The ones that are in the mountains, go, 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 you need to focus on us. So I was forced or made aware to, to find a balance between the two. Because you don't only have the Rizlili one, there are many. Because you come from a lineage of many. You might find where you've got 14 generations, and all of them, they are active in your life, and all of them, they come with their traumas, with their energies, all of them. I need to make sure I find a way of accommodating them in this vessel, you know. And they all pr play um, different roles in my life. There will be times where I will wake up and I would look at my hands sometimes. They would look very masculine. My energy that, that day, is I'm just going to, to be vibrating on a masculine level. And then there will be days where I would look at myself that will be so feminine. Then I know the, the energy or the way my day has to unfold, it will be based on what is it that she wants, you know. And also, it depends on, on what I want. 
Come a little close leaning like it's for, for your work. They're the ones who are going to give you your gift. They're the ones who are going to give you, let's say, for your wealth. They're the ones who are going to give you a um, miracle. There's ones by name of a spouse. That's why they're all playing different roles. Mm -hmm. There's ones by name of a ban, you know? So it's the, the way you pray, the way you pray, it depends on like who are you speaking to, you know? And yes, I, I, I had to go. Um, it was not easy. Ooh, guys, it was not easy. Please, guys, when you come and you want consultations from us, don't, don't come cheap at us. There's nothing for free. Madlozi, The same way that you, you can go to a doctor now, you, you, you want um, to do a consultation. Is the doctor going to consult? Come on. No, you have to pay for the consultation. It's the same thing with us. And people just think like, ah, no, can you, um, can you my dream? Can you explain what this dream? No, I can't do that because especially when you have dreams, that is a private communication between you and your sisters. Now when you're asking, especially when you put on a platform where I get that a lot on TikTok, I am not bashing my TikTok people, but I'm just, I just want them to understand what it's a private communication between you and your sisters. If you want clarification, it's either you can wake up or what I or happy and tell them to come back and clarify the dream, or you go find someone else winning. You can call them and consult over the phone because at the end of the day, the ancestors that you want to use for me to help clarify your dream, but when you're like, but you didn't pay, so I'm just telling you, I'm giving you my gift for, for Mahala. You know, there's, there's nothing Yamahala. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how you how much you shun upon it or how much you don't believe in it or how much you are selective about using the benefits. It doesn't matter. You need to put down something. So I'll go back again to being spirit-led. Being spirit-led for me, it means that I need to live a certain way, um, especially when it comes to being helpful. I need to do good even if there's no th th there's no people to applaud me for doing a good deed. Mm -hmm. I need to do good in my private space. I need to do good when there, there are no people around. So if I have to help you and there's no crowd, I have to do that. If they're telling me like, give that person one, two, three, four. I don't have to tell the world like, oh, um, Simon, um, a thousand, what's a nice call? And then I don't have to do that. Because the way that I'm going to be blessed, your ancestors are the one who are, go who are going to thank mine. was so obedient enough. At the moment, anyone needed help. I didn't have to announce it to the whole world, like, this is how much I helped, this is how much I donated, this is how. I don't have to do that. If I'm truly, innately helping you, because my spirit said, this is the right thing to do. The same thing, if a friend of mine is wrong about. Maybe they're fighting with their partner and they want me to take sides or whatever. I am not going to be biased just because you and I have a relationship. I'm not going to buy sides. Mm -hmm. And I'm even worse when it comes to kids. Because for me, kids, those are little angels. You cannot, I don't care if it's your child or not, but you cannot mistreat a child mm -hmm. because you're feeling somehow or the child did whatever. You are the adult. You can sit down and talk to that child and find out why the child reacted however way that they did. So for me, being spirit-led, it means, yes, I, I believe in the Bible. I will read you know, the Bible, but more than anything, I follow this campus. I follow what my spirit says. It's the same thing that someone comes here and they, they are revered, they are well-respected, they are seen as they do good, man. They, they support people, they sponsor people, they do this and that, da 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 da. You guys are like, Bona, this person is the best, but you don't know what this person does in the dark, but I can tell, I can see. Mm. And the way that I'm going to treat or relate to that person, I'm relating to that person based on what I see them in the spirit, mm. not based on what the world has read about them, what they chose to show the world. You know, that is where people get it wrong. Just because someone is speaking beautiful words, saying nice things, it doesn't mean they've got a good heart. I can be sitting here, last number, hating you with all of your guts. But because I'm smiling at you, I'm saying nice words, you think that I'm a good person, mm. right? Mm. But when I leave, I will do the worst things. I will curse you. I will wish evil upon you. Skim some role.
uh, Charity Ramahu. How is it she different from you? Okay. Um, with being on the show, ne? Mm. I had a, an amazing writer, um, KG Mohali. KG for me, even now looking back, I think he was a godsend because he literally, the storyline that we wrote um, for charity, I think because he tapped into exactly who I was and tapped into what I needed to do. And it was only later that I realized that like, oh my God, oh, because that's, it was around that time that I realized like, okay, the, the feeling to go in and, and, and do this and practice and then all twice, it just close all of that, you know. Um, it, it also um, has that element in it because everything everything falls into place. So being on Skim Sum and having um, KG write that storyline, for me, it, it was mind-blowing. And I, I appreciated the, the opportunity that um, I was given to play the role that was part of who I was. And the world didn't even know. None of you guys knew back then mm. that actually that is who I was. Mm. Even though spiritually I was aware that I do have this gift. Mm. But not a lot of people knew, you know, outside of the, the studio knew. I would go to work, yes, wearing my beads, wearing that, because they will show me things that I have to get. Um, they will show me the clothes that I need to, to have around me mm. or to get or to, yeah, to keep in the car, wherever. So I was shown, and we, we have a lot of... Um, there's a lot of people banali the chosen ones you know so it, it wasn't it, it was nothing new you know it was just that oh okay you're finally going to you know to do this you accept it that this is the, um, the path that you have to follow yeah. so it, it wasn't um, something hectic or it wasn't something any now I have to adjust no 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 everything just flew mm. as it was before so um, I just would like to know, what do you have to say to any other girl who's going to watch this and who's looking up to you, who has the same desires, passions, and dreams that you have? What would you say to them in a world like this, how to survive, basically? Please don't be scared to go against the tide. When everyone is going that direction, don't be scared to go backwards mm. because it is who you are. At the end of the day, you need to make sure that when you are alone, you love who you are you can have a conversation with yourself you know you can talk to God freely without um, feeling guilty you, you are not true to yourself mm -hmm. so do what you have to do for your survival you came here alone everyone else they will adjust that li just like you have to adjust to who they are everyone else will have to adjust we all came here for a purpose there's a contract that we signed before we transcended into this world mm -hmm. There's a contract that we signed before coming here. Or okay, I'm going to go to earth. And this is the path or the purpose that I'm created for. That's why I better find your purpose. Your purpose is not, they're not talking to the work that you have to do here. Mm. They're talking to the value add that you have to add onto other people's lives. Mm. That is what they, they mean. Mm. So once you find that, you realize that you're good to go. You don't have to worry about anything else. The rest will fall into place. And also, your people, your kindred spirit will be put in your path. You will meet them. You'll meet people who will support who you are mm. and where you're going and where you need to be. The resources will be there. But the bottom line is the first step is to accepting who you are, what you have to do, how you have to do it. Mm. If you don't know, ask questions and pray to your ancestors to guide you to find the right people who will help you to cultivate who you are. You don't have to shoot in the dark. You are never alone. You are not the first one to experience what you're experiencing. There are so many of us. I wish, just write to me. They, they must write to me. They must write to mahofe at mahofe.com. I will answer. They must seek me out. If they need advice, I am there. If they don't have anyone genuine to go to, because there's a lot of fakes out there. There's a lot of scammers out there. And it literally pisses me off when I hear someone saying that I went to do the to do this and that and I found a wrong person because you are destroying that person yeah. you are destroying the purpose that they came here to do you you are Satan's agent and this person just want to do good they want to follow their path yeah. 